And now, get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Chris Goes, Vic, and Sade. Well, sir, it's late afternoon as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mr. Victor Gook and his son, Mr. Rush Gook, at the library table playing rummy. And the elder contestant is saying, Why do you sit and look sluggishly at your card? Figuring out something. At this rate, I'll be an old man before the game's over. You take all the time you want. Oh, what an outrageous falsehood. I play fast. My brain like, works like lightning speed. Oh, my boy. Playing figures. I just got in the six of diamonds. Ah, exactly what I need. By George Williamson, you're in for an ignominious defeat. I mean to give you such a trouncing, Hi. you'll gnash your teeth and tear your hair. Here's mine. Hi. Your father in there with you? Yeah. <laughs> we never get to finish a rummy game anymore. Hello, Sadie. First girl to reach my side gets a hug and a kiss. Put your rummies off to one side, fella. We had big excitement around here today. Indeed. Mr. Gompox and Mr. Donahue had an enormous fight this noon. Indeed. I just now heard about it. Been chanting with Mr. Gompox out by the garbage box. This fight? No, they didn't actually hit each other, but they were both terrible mad. I never seen Mr. Gumpox terrible mad. Didn't think he could get terrible mad. The fellow that can get terrible mad is Mr. Razor Stump. By George, he really can get terrible mad. Do you want to tell something, Rush, or would you like to have me tell something? You go ahead. You will let me say nine consecutive words without buttoning in? Mm. Howard ate Mr. Donahue's lunch. Who did? Howard. You know Howard. Mr. Gumpox is horse. Oh. Ate his lunch up slick and clean. Mr. Donahue was fit to be tied. Oh, how did he well, get... all this happened this noon. Around one o'clock or kind of halfway in around through there, I imagine. What were the circumstances attendant upon this Well, I'll tell place? you if you give me half a chance. Shoot. Mr. Gumpox was up the alley somewhere picking up some tin cans that had dropped off in his wagon. He left Howard out and back here beside Donahue's garbage box. Howard is a type of horse that'll always... I beg your pardon for talking. Go right ahead. You go right ahead, ma'am. No, you. Oh. Now proceed, kiddo. He says another word, I'll throw him out the window. Well, Mr. Gompox left his hor- horse and wagon out by Donahue's garbage box. Mr. Donahue come out the back door and headed across the yard on his way to the roundhouse. Had a Kansas City freight drag at two o'clock. When he got as far as the alley, he realized he'd forgot his pipe and smoking tobacco. So he put his dinner bucket on top of the garbage box and chased back to the house. Well, while he was gone, Howard calmly opened that dinner bucket and ate every smidgen of what was inside. Thank goodness <laughs> Ain't that the bullet that choke Billy Patterson? The most amazing incident. Sound like an item from that Believe It or Not column in the paper? Yeah. No joke to it, though. Mr. Donahue was hopping mad, and so was Mr. Gumpox. His voice just shook when he was telling me about it. Why is he mad? Who, Mr. Gumpox? He's got no beef. Mr. Donahue is the guy that had the kick coming. Mr. Gumpox Mr. Gumpox is mad because Mr. Donahue hit Howard. Oh. Hauled off and hit Howard a real hard lick. Don't know as I blame him. Some dog on horse ate my dinner, I... Yet, Mr. Gumpox's voice just trembled when he was telling me about it. Ordinarily, he's such a meek fella. Uh Uh-huh. Say, Howard must be a very brilliant animal. A dinner bucket has clamps to unclamp. How did Howard... Who even knows? I guess the latch on the dinner bucket wasn't fastened very secure. Howard shoved it around with his nose, and it come open, and here were all these lovely sandwiches and slices of beef and stuff. <laughs> and a regular picnic for himself. <laughs> Don, you emerged from the house, walked out to the garbage and, box. And seen and... what happened, yes. Any boys with rage? Oh, boy. Well, I'd say he was considerable at fault. Certainly not very smart to leave an, an unlatched dinner bucket full of meat and stuff right under a horse's chin. That's what Mr. Gumpox pointed out. He appeared on the scene, huh? Yeah, come running up the alley all out of breath and took in the situation at a glance. At first, he was apologetic, tried to make excuses for Howard. But when Mr. Donahue hit Howard, he went up and smoked. Who did you win? A newspaper. Newspaper? Yeah, a folded up newspaper. Hit Howard with it hard as he could. That, that wouldn't hurt. hurt. Wouldn't hurt? No. Well, let me try hitting you with a folded up newspaper once. Folded up newspaper wouldn't hurt a horse, man. No. Howard whinnied and screamed and leaped six feet in the air. Howard's is fifty. I'll say. Well, according to Mr. Gumpox, he certainly acted like he was hurt. 
Then everybody was mad. All three of them were in a rage. My way of thinking, Pa Donahue had the real grievance. Mine too. Well, Mr. Gumpox feels he had a grievance also. Well, maybe he did. I guess they went to fighting hammer and tongs. Mr. Donahue says, I got a Kansas City freight drag this afternoon, and now with my dinner bucket empty, I won't get a chance to eat till midnight. He was fit to be tied. <laughs> Howard was fit to be tied. How do you mean? Howard's a horse. 